Comedy Hills, which is rated a 4.5 out of about 180 reviews on Google. So that's pretty good. Is it a trashy course? We'll take a look. Robert Trent Jones, senior course. It's hard to get a tea time on this municipal course. Park systems. Considered to be the crown jewel of the county courses, mainly because it was built by Robert Trent Jones, hosted some major championships. We're going to talk about that. For the most part, you can see some of the historical buildings that are still here today. Very old buildings. You're going to get even older trees here on this course. The course is located in Colts Neck and has the original clubhouse which we walked through and got a little bit of footage. The course almost felt like a private one because it was so hard to get in and book a tee time as we get into the winter months. It's getting harder and harder. One thing that jumped out, there's a Wikipedia page for this historical course. The outside of it looks true to its nature, while the inside had multiple renovations. Now we're even gonna talk about the systems needed in place to keep this course in such great shape. But those historical courses, you know, they really kind of drain themselves off the green. You can see anything just bounces right into the wood, you will lose it. The wind does play a factor, which separates bad golf from good golf. But look at that. Everything about this is unique and special. Considered to be the number one public golf course in New Jersey, considered to its website, this Robert Trent Jones design classic stretches 7,000. 49 yards from those blue tees. I recommend playing from that. Get your money's worth here. It's going to cost a $100 bill. It's well worth it if you can get the tee times. That's the biggest problem. It's packed. It's associated with multiple golf courses in this municipality. And I tell you what, this one is the best one out of all of them, hands down. I'm not going to take that away from you. Better have your Monmouth County ID card ready to book those good tee times in the morning. And you better book early and there's multiple ranges of different ids and i don't want to get into all that and get lost but a hundred dollar bill is going to cost that's their website now when you look at the scorecard it's only six thousand and eight hundred yards from those back tees the back tees aren't really that impressive I, I think they try to maintain the blue and the white tees consistently close together at least on the weekends we've noticed that of course has a slope of 135 and a rating of 73 Point eight. It's a USGA course, and there's a total of 138 bunkers on it. And I was even thinking to myself, I had way too many bunker shots. And that's because there's a multiple amount scattered throughout the course. And there's water playing a factor on four of the 18th holes here. They do have a little bit of a driving range. Not a big one. It's real tight, and it's mostly irons. You can't even see it on Google Maps. I'm not sure if it was there or not. You know, everything about it is charming and fun. The check-in process and the starter was one of the nicest check-ins I've had in a long time. Felt like a private course. Driving range is classified as a warm-up range, which kind of makes sense. They got food, hot dogs, beers, everything you really need. A full stock grill and tap house. It also looks like a wonderful clubhouse inside there. I walked in there and washed your hands. It just is a nice place to be. This is the back nine, and I thought the back nine was better than the front nine. Uh, we did get paired up on the front nine, and that might have played a factor, but that clubhouse is fun looking. It's massive. It hosts many weddings and things of that nature, and you've probably have been there for some sort of fun event. It also has a one-mile walking trail that swings throughout this course. It's fun. It's exciting. And I like everything about it. Is it the best Monmouth County course? Absolutely. Hands down. Is it the gem of public golf within South Jersey in the Central Jersey area? No. It's a nice golf course. It's fun. Robert Trent Jones built a, a lot of good ones. Ooh, Hanover is another great one that he's built. And uh, I think it's comparison to that. We're going to give you a rating at the end of this. But we're going to talk about some of the nicer holes like this part three that I think if you got a hole in one there, maybe it would be a little bit higher on this score. And we've completed 150 golf reviews and we're cleaning up everything that we do along the way. We're trying to give out the best golf content with educational purposes of the golf course. This one's built Robert Trent Jones, and he's built a lot of them. We're gonna 
dive in a little bit more on this golf course because it's originally one of the most exclusive private golf courses when it was first built in 1965. And the funder of this golf course, person given a lot of bit of money, Henry Dixon Myers. He built this course and it was I'll named it. pretty much the number one private exclusive golf course in New Jersey. There wasn't cars swinging through it like we hear today. The Hominy Hill Farms, which was 411 eight, 11 acres in Colts Neck, was then converted, starting built in 1963 with famous golf architect who was commissioned to come in, Mr. Senior himself, Robert Trent Jones, who converted 180 acres of the farmland into a public, private, private 18-hole golf course, entertaining farm business contacts and jones was known for designing and redesigning hundreds of challenging holes during his seven decade career building golf course and this was one of the more championship quality style courses when it was built as a par 72 stretching 7,121 yards it's shrunk since then the pro shop or the clubhouse is actually an old dairy barn that was converted by an architect derek Nimp. Now he came in and converted it into club lockers and has a restaurant with inside that sits 60 people on the ground floor alone. It's an it's an impressive building and I'm a, uh, it's something that I think needs to be highlighted in this video. 1975, the opportunity for someone like me or you to play this golf course finally came into play when the Myers family decided to put the golf course up for sale and made a verbal agreement to sell the course to the count. Now, since then, it hasn't really received too many updates. We did ask the starter if there's been any changes since then to the layout of the course, and it really does remain the same since time it opened. Now, we'll write in the comment section if we got that wrong, but moving forward, at least we knew that there's a lot of bunkers on this course, and the layout of it was more of a walking style course and stays true to its design when it was open. It's championship style, but it did shrink within the years up to this point. Hopefully, it can get back to that champion style, and those back tees can start playing a factor. But it could be a $150 golf course at that point. It might not be worth oh. it. I think everything about this course is fun and exciting. It belongs in a seven. I think a 7.4 because of the So when we move into number 18, we're going to talk about there. our rating on this golf channel. I think it belongs in a seven. I don't know if it's more than a seven. But somewhere in that clubhouse says, wow, that's a nice course. It's hard to get out here, so it has that country club feel to it. And it's challenging. I just hit another one in the bunker. I've been in the bunker all damn day today. That's going to do it for this video. Keep a lookout for more videos to come. This is the Park Festival. Wow.